Hello, welcome back to OS 11. Today we're talking about calling assembly from C. Obviously we've already gone one way. We've called C from assembly because our entry point to this kernel is in assembly and we call our main method in C. So we already know how to do that. We're just going to try to go the other way today. So how will we accomplish this? Feel free to pause the video and take a peek right now. I'm not going to talk too much to this because it basically says everything we're going to talk about in code. So let's jump in. If you're following along at home, or wherever else you might be typing this, you can uh, go to your PKOS directory that you cloned from GitHub, and you can check out OS 11. This will give you the finished version of the code, and you can hit make run and see what it's like. Or if you want to follow along, I'm going to be uh, checking out head minus two from OS 11 and typing from there for this video, just to show you line by line what is happening. So we'll do that and we'll jump in. So let's start with the C file. What do we have to change here? We'll add our header that points to our assembly function. And it's going to have three arguments, the character we want to print and the row and column we want to print it on in text mode VGA. We use the extern keyword to denote, hey, it's not really a C file we're getting this from, it's from assembly. At least I think that's what it means. That's what it means to me. <laughs> Also, we're just going to get rid of this whole uh, directly printing the memory stuff. We don't, we don't do that anymore. We use our special function. And that is print character with ASM. And this is what it looks like if you use it. I'm just going to put a Z for fun. And uh, we'll go, you know, row, comma, column, just like we have it defined up there. Really easy to use. And then at the bottom, we can do the same thing. Print character with assembly. And I'm just going to put a little nice design there. At zero, 00, we'll put a dash. You would think we'd have like a print string thing by now, but uh, not quite. <laughs> all right, that's really all we have to do in C. So we can jump over to the assembly file and finish this up. Assembly, all right, cool. Fun stuff. Before I forget, I know I said we'd do this last, but uh, it's so easy to forget that I want to do it now. So we're going to add print character with ASM as a global here, along with our start this makes it accessible to C. If you don't put this global in here, the compiler is going to be wondering, or rather the linker, LD is going to be like, where the heck is this print character with ASM? Because we don't see it. I guess it has to do with how an ASM assembles it. If you declare global, maybe it puts metadata in somehow or another. I'm pretty sure global is not legal when you're using binary like we were doing before, fbin. So that makes me think it's in the elf metadata. With that, we can actually create this function. But remember, it's really just a label that we have here, and C is treating it like a function. This is just a label to a certain position within our raw machine code once it's, uh, once it's compiled. But we'll treat it like a function, and it's going to work well for us. So uh, it's always nice to put as a comment what you're doing in the assembly, just so it's a little clearer. So right at the top, we'll just say that our offset in other words, how far from the base memory location of video memory is going to have to be calculated as, you know, row times 80 plus column. So how can we do that kind of arithmetic in assembly? Of course, it's not easy. Uh, let's start out by getting the first, or I'm sorry, the second argument. And now you'll see that we're accessing the stack pointer plus four plus four. So we're really reaching back in the stack. When you push something onto the stack, the stack grows downward typically or at least in this architecture. So ESP will decrease by four when you push something. So we're getting things that were already pushed. Specifically, we're getting something that was pushed two times ago, basically. And I don't know exactly how this works, but really, uh, if you go back four bytes, you get the first argument. If you go back another four bytes, you get the second argument. And then you can get the third argument by going back another four bytes. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing row. So we're just going to say, so far, EAX equals row. So we moved that first argument into a register. Now we're going to move EDX, 80, because 80 is the number of columns per row. If you remember, we had this defined in our other file as a little preprocessor directive there, so we don't forget it. In assembly, we don't have that luxury. So, uh, well, we probably do, but I'm too lazy to figure out how. So now let's multiply EDX. Now you're probably thinking, where is the other register that goes with this? It turns out EAX is implicitly used as the first register and as where the result is stored. So what we're doing with this mole EDX, we're multiplying the value in EAX by the value in EDX and storing the value in EAX. 
So now eax equals rho, our first argument, times 80. If you look up here, we're about halfway there to completing our little offset formula that we had. Next, we can add to eax the last piece of the puzzle here. We're going to get the third argument. And if you check back, the third argument is column. So now eax equals rho times 80 plus column. So we have the exact offset in memory that we need to go from the base address, or so we think. Not quite, actually. Let's move 2 into edx, and we're going to multiply edx again. So basically, we just took eax and we multiplied it by 2. Why? Times 2, because 2 bytes per character on screen. Remember that there is one byte for the actual character itself, and there's another byte for formatting, like is it black on white, white on black, or is it some kind of crazy color that you have for the terminal? So that's why we multiply by 2. We're really not worried about the format right now. We are just going to store the character value. Now let's start using edx for something else. We're going to put 0xb8000, our video pointer, or basically the start of video memory, in there. Now we're going to add edx to eax. So we're adding 0xb8000 and our calculated offset to get the exact byte where we're going to place this character that was passed to this function. So now what do we do? We put that exact character, my friend, into eax. So here's the first argument, ESP plus 4, and it is character C. That's now stored in eax. So now all we have to do is go to the address of edx, because 0xb8000 is an address. We added another offset to that. Logically, we know in our heads it's an address. We can go to that address with these square brackets, kind of like we're doing with the stack. And what are we going to put at that address? We're going to put AL, the lower 8 or something, maybe 16 bits, I forget, but the lower however many bits of the EAX register, which is holding our character C. So that's really all we have to do. We seem to be done here. We stored the value in memory. It should pop up on the screen now, but what are we missing? Important caveat, you better put a return, because if you don't, it's going to keep running. It doesn't care if this is a label or anything. It just ignores this, basically. It's going to keep on rolling, and it's going to execute this stuff again. So you're going to end up with an endless loop of just, like, whenever you call print character with ASM, it's going to launch into the main method again, and uh, it'll come back again, and it'll just be ugly. You don't want that. And it's really hard to find this. If you forget to return, there is no warning. It's not illegal at this level. There's nothing there to catch you and stop you from doing that. So remember your return statement. We return command, and that's it for the assembly file. So let's try it out. Minor correction, I tried my best, but I actually misspelled our function up here. So maybe you caught that. Print character with, and I did it again, with ASM. There we go. In the spirit of debugging this together, here's what we have. Pretty good, but not quite what I was expecting. What happened to my message up here? Well, if you were paying attention more than I was, you'll see that we printed everything to 0, 0. So really, we were just getting that last character. So I'm just going to move everything along, uh, changing the column, but not the row, so it prints horizontally. And we can run it again. Make run. Ah, beautiful. That is exactly what we wanted. So there you go. You called a function from your C file back to assembly and then popped right back into C again. Easy as pie. We'll use that in the future, but for now, that's all we had. Thanks for watching OS 11. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you for number 12, hopefully.